everyone, my name is Eder Gnatovic. I'm a principal software engineer and architect at Red Hat, and I'm pretty happy to be here. For me, speaking at KubeCon San Francisco is a milestone in my life. I hope during this talk, you understand a little bit why. And my career is based on into two pillars, open source and community engagement. Those are the main drivers that brought me here to become a Staff Plus engineer at Red Hat. On open source, I'm part of the Key community. Key community is a home for little open source projects that play a ro role in delivering solutions around set workflows and decisions, business automation, and artificial intelligence in the cloud. I'm also proud to be an active member of multiple communities, including being an active member of SoJava in Brazil, that is the biggest Java user group in the world. I'm a co-chair of multiple key cons, and also I'm proud to be a Java champion. Talking a little bit about my work, currently I'm working with tooling for workflows and decisions over Red Hat serverless platform. On my team, we develop tooling for orchestration and coordinating microservices and functions and a lot of other type of services over the Knative platform. And when I try to explain to others Micah here, in, in the past was hard, but after the launch of the book for Mule Lawson, Colin Stephan engineer book, those four archetypes really helped me to describe and most important to understand what I do and what other staff engineers do does. He split staff engineers over four archetypes. The team lead, that's someone that guides the approach and execution of a particular team or a group of teams in an area. The architect, that is the person responsible for the direction, quality and approach uh, with a critical area, and both today and with the eyes on the horizon for multiple years. There is the third archetype, there is the solver. The solver is someone that really dig deep into our, in our complex challenges and problems and find a path. And the fourth one is the right, right hand. The right hand partner extension, uh, uh, acting as extension of a CEO or executive level and becoming authority over a particular part of the organization. When I think about my current role at Red Hat, I am a mix of the team lead and architect for service student. I lead a reasonable number of people split at around eight initiatives all around the service student with most mostly focus around uh, uh, service ecosystem. But the question that I would, would like to explore today is how I did end up as a Staff Plus engineer. There is a lot of uncertainty in the industry. What is the next for your career after you become a senior professional? And more important, what are the steps to you achieve that? During this talk, I plan to elaborate how did I achieve this role and how community engagement can pave your path to become a successful Staff Plus engineer. Coming back on my life, I was born and raised in a small town in a Brazilian countryside called Apucarana. You probably already know this city, right? Because we are really popular in the world because we are well known as the hat capital. A title that all Apocaranenses, that are people that live there, are really proud of. We are even so proud of this that we built the largest cap in the world, as you can see in this picture. This is something that will be forgetful for you, right? Also, we are love so much caps and hats that <laughs> besides the having the biggest cap in the world, our major decided to put hats in our bus stops. Growing in a small town was a nice experience. However, there is a big challenge when you love computers and programming and decided to pursue a career in tech and live in a rural small town. I, in my life, I always believe that people get better at whatever they spend their time on. And since the beginning, like on the teenagers, when I get the first contact with a computer, this is a fun story, but I, I'll keep this for later. Kim asked me after the talk, could be that since like a teenager, I decided that it was clear for me that the technical track is what sparks joy in my life. I love computers. I love to dig in, into new technologies, to deep understand software and architectures and learn new technical domains. And as I told you that I believe that people get better at whatever they spend their time on. I constantly want to keep getting better at technical things, things. but some years ago in my career, I faced a wall. Um, because when you come 
uh, as aspiring technolo technologists outside their tech scene, you find a lot of challenges like lack of understanding your career path because there are no clear path for you beyond senior, lack of your co of complex challenges in your company because most of the work are crude work and tech skills are more or less a commodities. It's more important the lack of role models and mentors. I don't have guidance of the right direction, even people that make to help me make my career decisions and lack of opportunity. Most of the career growth beyond senior requires to be on the manageable path. And I believe most of the challenge that you face when you go to a career, pursue a career, and you are not in a taxi are the same that aspiring, aspiring seniors have to become a staff plus engineer. So the first question that I like to discuss is what is beyond the senior level? And a staff engineer path is not well defined. And in my case, in my reality, was intriguing the fact that everyone more experienced than myself and above the senior level becomes a people manager. I, I believe that because there is a big maze around uh, to keep on the technical track. If you are destined to become a staff plus, a staff plus engineer, the conventional uh, wisdom argues that you should figure out the path by yourself. And I believe that I am good at anything that I put, put my effort to remember. But the problem is why and what? What should I do? Because there is a lot of mysticism around this role. And there is a, this thing that really frustrates me that there is no clear definition in the path. There is required skills. It's hard to replicate because I don't have real models. And what bothers me is that when I talk with some people that are more seniors and keep coding, they say, ah, you should figure out the path by yourself. So there is no clear path to me to, 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 to pursue in becoming a staff plus engineer. But either way, eventually, I, I end up as a staff plus engineer at Red Hat. I, I achieved that because at my career, growth was based on three pillars, community engagement, open source, and participation in software conference. Our, our, our industry are evolving to try to solve this, 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 this issue of no clear path beyond senior. And Tanya really in, really in his book, Staff Engineer Path, she did a stellar job describing the pillars that support your impact as a staff engineer. So a staff engineer should always strive to have impact. And, and Tanya described the pillars that will help you to achieve the impact. The first one is big picture thinking. That means that you should be able to step back and take a broader view on year long projects. The second pillar is execution at staff level. The projects that you take, you become more messy and more ambiguous. This will involve more people, more political capital, influence, and even changing culture of your company. The third pillar is leveling up, that when you increase your seniority, we become more responsibility for raising the standards and the skills of the engineers in your team and also in your organization. You should be intentional about influence your team through mentoring, to teaching, as well as accidental influence being a role model. All those three pillars, according to Tanya, they sit on a solid foundation of technology and experience. And this foundation is super critical as technical skills are the foundation for every staff engineer role. And you keep exercising doing this during your whole career. But the question is still remains, how does someone become a staff, a, a successful staff plus engineer? And how you can learn from the best engineers and access the latest technologies if your current job or situation, for instance, myself living in a small Brazilian rural town, doesn't give you this kind of opportunity. In this talk, I will share the secret that changed my life and paved my path to become a successful staff plus engineer, community engagement. So community engagement uh, provides healthy community engagement that provides for you a safe space you develop and sharpen your staff plus skills. Developer community encourages you sharing what you know with others, being a safe, a safe space for you to grow as a reference in your field. Also, it provides you motivation and encouragement on the long path towards a staff plus career. Communities are a big opportunity multiplier and can help you to build a network of peers and open up chances to find mentors and role models in your field.
Well, during this talk, you see that uh, I, I use the Tanya diagram of, of the, the pillars for you. And for each, di each pillar that is in red is the type of community engagement that you help you to develop their skills. As I, and I, you can see the, the, the spoiler, then I believe with community engagement, you can have all of those. Now, let's take a look and understand how community engagement can benefit your career. The first type of community engagement, it is the easy one for you because you are already doing, is participating in software conference. Software conference can help you build three pillars to drive the impact on your organizations and careers. It can help you build a network of peers to remember, and you should remember that participation in events is much more than just sitting and listen to a talk from an expert. We will see in a few how you can boost the impact of attending an event in Archicon and how this can change your career. Attending contact conference and, and small user group events, you can stay ahead of others and be aware of new and te emerging technological trends. The biggest takeaway by attending any tech conference for you would be definitely bringing home a new perspective toward business and technology and even life in general. Another important aspect is that you are cultivating the habit of investing in yourself. Because this is something that you should do and you do for your whole life, you decide to pursue the Staff Plus Engineer. So it is the app that you need to cultivate. Whether you are going for the network purpose, inspiration, to get updated on upcoming trends, or just to get yourself away from your daily hustle, attending those events means you are investing in yourself. So talking about my timeline and my career, in 2007, I was started as a software engineer. As you can see, suddenly I become the controversial two years senior, and on the next year, I become a software coordinator, a polite name to a polite name to someone managing a project without the official role and a salary of a real manager. And at this moment in 2010, I was really disappointed with my career and almost quit tech. Because if you remember, the technical track is what sparked me joy. But unfortunately, I didn't see career grow. Uh, and career path, on, the only career path that I have ahead was the management path to become a people or project manager. There is something really respectful. I really admire my managers and the, the senior management, but not something that sparked me joy to my life. And the problem that coming from a place, place that there is no role models, no reference in tech industry. For me, there is no clear perspective of growing outside being a manager. And the problem is that, for me, is that there is, the manager was the only clear path, but I think that there is a bunch of things on tech industry that I even don't know that they I don't know. So I even don't know that those things exist. And this, this put a, a, a lot of... Um, uh, damage for the, my vision and my understanding on my career, and that's why I almost quit that. I was a little upset, and I was coding less and less and forcing to become a manager as the only career path. And I decided to explore new ways to sharpen my tech skills. And luckily, I found a community where I create a safe space to discuss Java technology, the Soul Java. I specifically, I went to Sol Java Campinas, that is Sol Java in my hometown. And there, I figured out that there is a portal called InfoQ. Really, InfoQ become part of my morning routine. And then I decided to write it for it. InfoQ is starting at InfoQ Brazil. And I started to translate dozens of news and articles for InfoQ to Portuguese. And due to that, I received a free ticket to Quecon Sao Paulo 2011 a conference that at that moment I only hear a bit about. My participation in the conference was a blast. I still remember the feeling of how happy I was because I finally, I saw people that I even beyond senior, they are people that are great, really leaders in our industry that don't even know that they exist and there is still in the career path. And this brings me a lot of joy. The only issue of attending the conference is that there are there thousand, one, one thousand, I think, uh, fifteen hundred people there discussing things that I never heard before. And uh, the aftermath for me was that my position of the InfoQ or Kikon adoption curve, I was pretty on the on the right.
I have no clue of the people uh, I was talking there. I spent three days watching talks. People hear people see words, and I never saw these words before. But the most important thing that happened for me is that for the first time, I realized that there is a technical path beyond senior. And from that moment, I, I decided that my goal would be to replicate what those people do in their careers. So if you are attending a conference like you are here right now and you are you are uh, aspiring uh, staff, you should attend your conference to inspire your growth, to find your role models and to predate with new trends and eventually become a reference at our company. This is what company did for me on the on, on when I was aspiring staff. And one thing that helped me to become a reference in my company, in my user group, was to that I started to present conference summary of all the things that I learned in the conference for people uh, in the user groups and my, com and, and my company. And this eventually led me to a lot of speakers opportunities, but this is my story for later. And if you are a Staff Plus engineer, the major takeaways for you attending a conference should be to help you take a broader view of your field, of, of our field, to do a lot of network with peers and open up for you new perspectives. But the question is, how should I attend a conference? What your, uh, what are your suggestion takeaways when I attend a conference? For me, my suggestion takeaways for you, and if you are an aspiring staff plus engineer, you should talk with three new people today. You should try to connect with the conference speakers. And when you come back, you should present the conference summary at your company. And you should find one new topic to learn in the following weeks. If you are already a Staff Plus engineer and are attending a conference, I suggest for you talk with new three new people today, connect with conference organizers, and access your project with the lessons that you learn at your conference, and even reproduce the learning of your conference to your team uh, back when, when you are back from the conference. I suggest you, this is something they always do, is super interesting. Watch a full track of a different field. So like the Kikon, we have three days, take one day to sit in a, free, a full track that have no idea this can maybe open up you for a new domain. And what I gently ask you to introduce a junior person from your team or your company to the conference circuit. Present them why conferences are so good and why we are all here. So with this, we conclude the first type of com uh, community engagement that is participating in conferences. The second one is, is speaking at community events. Is speaking at community events are rewarding for various reasons. Let you share and seek fed feedback, let you develop public speaking skills, help you build credibility over the field, help you to network with other speakers and the, one of the best things for me is that speaking at community events and, and conference let me travel the world for free. Talking about my timeline, do you remember in 2011, I was really active as an InfoQ editor. So in 2012, so one year later, something really interesting happened. One day before the conference, a speaker consulted their presentation at the Java track, and the track host was kind of desperate trying to find a replacement. The lucky moment for me was this host was also a member of InfoQ and asked in the InfoQ editor's mail list if someone has something ready to present at a conference. I said, hell yes, yes. And in the end, my talk was about Java APIs and was one of the REST APIs and was one of the most uh, best evaluations of the conference. This was the success of this talk guaranteed me that I was invited to the next icon. And later, I presented the same talk about Java REST APIs at my first international conference, Java 1 San Francisco. I used it as justification for the abstract of my talk, the Kikon Sao Paulo evaluation, a literary copy-paste evaluation in the abstract, and also added a video of my talk. If you remember that, three years ago, I almost quit that. And three years later, I was speaking at the biggest Java conference in the world, in, in the most important tech hub that is San Francisco. And nowadays, I'm a regular speaker on multiple events, and this is something that I'm really proud of. But it's always a secret behind this type of stories. And remember that when I went to the QCOM and I decided to be like those persons,
And I have started to present a conference summary and new a conference summary and new trends at my local group and my company. Between, between 2011 and the last minute invitation for Kikon Sao Paulo, I presented more than 20 talks on user group and a smaller conference in one year. I was speaking like Crazy, almost every week. And when the host of the Kikon approached me in the IFOQ mail list, I had five different Java trucks ready and battle tested. And I, 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 I showed him like a buffet of Java talks that I can present. I guess that is the reason why he chose me. Another important aspect is that all those talks gradually make me a reference in my local user group and in the in, in the Java community, and later I become a Java champion. I keep talking a lot, I keep presenting a lot of user group, and even this talk become arrived here at Econ San Francisco. I did three private rehearsals in my in different user groups to become ready to present this, this conference for you. So what uh, are my takeaways and how speaking at community events changed my life. When I was an aspiring staff plus, speaking at local community events teach me as an introvert how to speak in public and have a huge impact on my career growth and more specifically help me build my personal brand and become a reference in a Java community. I also become a, a really well connected person, and I will talk more about it in the next story. And if you are a staff plus engineer, speaking at the event is at first a good thing for the industry, and it helps our community to move forwards. Is a way for you to give back for the community. Also, helping you helps helps you sharpen your X, keeping you updated with the field, and practicing to do important enterprise or corporate presentations. And another important aspect is that this helps you to build a network of peers. This is really important because the conference, the software conference, is where the cool people hang out. And you need to be around those cool people to understand. And another important thing is that this helps you to promote your teamwork and help you to promote my work. And you see soon what are the impact for this. And what are my suggested actual, actual items for you if you are if you are willing to speak at community events? If you are aspir as, aspiring staff plus engineer, you should do a, a learn in public search session. Learn something and uh, and talk and do a presentation in your local user group or at your company. The second thing that I recommend for you is to find your local user group of your framework language and submit this session. Should be this learn in public session and learn how to write a good talk abstract. A good, a good talk abstract make the really difference of you getting accepted to the conference. If you are already a staff plus engineer, my recommendation for you is that if possible, Twice a year, do a learn in public session. Learn something new and present in a smaller user group. And also promote your teamwork in the software community. Do another talk promoting your, your teamwork in the software community. And on this talk, I, I, I really beg you to take someone really junior in your team, mentor and pair, and go in a conference talk with them. In that way, you transform their, their lives. So this concludes... The second uh, uh, type of community engagement, we already talked about how participating in the conference can transform your staff plus engineer career and how speaking at events can transform as well. Now we go for the third one, that is the open source. Open source community engagement can contribute a lot for you to sharpen your staff plus skills. There is, you learn how to communicate, especially written, uh, you learn how to work remotely in a sync with different cultures because usually the open source projects are multicultural with people with all the world. And also you increase a lot of your visibility. And eventually, if you do open source enough, you eventually you become a reference in the field. And what is my timeline with open source? Do you recall my talk at Kikon Sao Paulo? And the first one in 2012, was in my last minute moment, and but then this brings me the invitation for QCon 13. 
And I think in 2013, I have some time to prepare. So I decided to talk about my consultant work as a final institution project. And this project you was using, I uh, was building tooling around an open source project called Drews. As you remember, Drews is part of the key community at Red Hat. And in 2014, I was happy to join Red Hat to work in the tooling in the Q community. But how this story happened? At the KeyCon Sao Paulo, one of the key community leads, Alex Porcelli, was the track host for one of the tracks. You remember then when I told you that you should read track hosts, talk with them, and meet three people at a new three new people at the conference. Alex was one of them in, in that moment. He noticed uh, after I approached him, he noticed my work, and I'm lucky that he attended my talk and we started to discuss my project and why my team was doing what they are doing, and we started to collaborate on the open source community and become great friends. Eventually, there was a new position at Red Hat for his team, and he invited me to work full-time in open source. And all the rest of my career was the consequence of this single talk. It's a single talk that I decided to do talking about the open source project in a big event like Kikon. And my takeaways is that with open source, open the 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 the, the a lot of learning opportunities for myself, learning how to code, how to write, how to interact with people worldwide, with different backgrounds and with different cultures. And give me a chance to, to work on a project more and more interesting and complex than your current role. And remember that if you are a staff plus engineer, you will be do, do good for the industry. You become a good heifer in the field and you become a practice to lead without authorities. Lead without authority is one of the funda funda fundamental skills to become a good staff engineer. Because as a staff plus engineer, most of the time you have no reports. And the only way to lead your team is that you learn how to lead without authority. And... How I suggest the actual items for you uh, for open source engagement. If you are an aspiring Staff Plus engineer, find an open source community project that your project current consumes and try to do the first co contribution for this project. To learn how to do the first contribution on the info queue, there is this article from Alex Portet, it's how to accelerate Staff Plus career through open source engagement, where he style how to do each step by step how to do your first open source. And if you are a staff plus engineer, if possible, become a core contributor of open source community project that your current initiatives consumes. This will make you a key strategy, a key asset for your company. And also I would gently ask you to mentor pair with someone for your team and guide them on their first contribution for open source. And this concludes the third step of third part of community engagement that is open source. The fourth one is organizing events and communities. Organizing events in community are super important because they can uh, have a big impact on, into your staff plus career. Organizing events can help you teach how to create technical content and also teach to be deliberate, analyzing the state of the art, uh, industry. The state of the art, art of the industry will help you to build a network of peers. And more important for me in my case is that you help you to give back to your community. In 2013, you recall that I was doing a lot of talks and one of my best friends, Leandro, uh, we decided to start Lunch and Learn group in our company. Remember that we, we go for the conference, uh, uh, learn about new things, study, and bring back for the company. We did that during Lunch uh, and Learn sessions. In the beginning, was thus the younger people and the trainee that come to our session. But the things could come to grow and grow, become bigger and bigger. And we decided together with, your, with, with some, some other friends to run, to run our first conference at Campinas in 2013. This conference was called DevCon. It was a lot of work, but the conference was really a success. 
And due to that, we are invited to become part of program committee of Kikon São Paulo on 2014. And in 2018, like four years later, Leandro and I become partners running for two years the whole content and the whole conference of the Kikon in Brazil. That was an amazing experience and one of the best network opportunities of my life. And I'm still working with Kikons, with Kikon Plus and Kikon London committees. And it, it's something that I cannot describe how is important in my career. Every six months, uh, because we do this it's every six months, we I, I, was, I was lucky enough to reunite with the brightest minds of the tech industry and discuss what is the important for the tech industry right now. What will be the topics for a conference? We decide the talks, the tracks, and then from the tracks, we invite track hosts. And when the track hosts invite the speakers like myself to be here. So it's a huge opportunity to me to understand how the software trends, understand the discussions that we have in our group are so valid and I learn a lot. And my takeaways for organizing a conference is that you remember that the staff plus engineer archetypes is um of the architect is about the person responsible for the direction the quality and approach of most year projects organizing community events and in my point of view is one of the best ways to keep my eyes updated and learn with others how to do informal decisions about my project and my architecture. Eventually, I built a huge network of peers and I staged the whole conference asking questions about people and what they're doing, what they're doing the next few years, what are their plans for their project for, for in the long term, and I'm able to bring all this knowledge back and apply for my company. Another important aspect of this network that I build is that this provides me motivated and motivation and encouragement on the long path towards I staff plus career. As I saw that I for me it's more than 10 years working to become a staff plus engineer. And most of the times you feel like you are alone on this path. One thing that I do try to do as a leader is to shield as much as my I can my team of the problems. And this takes uh, a lot of energy and sometimes frustrating because I don't have anyone or a peer to vent. Naturally, with the Kikon, I build a network of a lot of others, staff plus uh, engineers, and I always have someone in WhatsApp or to do a quick call just to vent about the problems and it's really helpful to gather another perspective. As a staff plus engineer, one of the biggest takeaways for me is that you can become a role model for your team. You can build a network of peers, as I told you. And the most important right now is that you are able to do impact on an industry level. One example for that is last year, after reading the staff plus book from Will Larson, I proposed to have a track on Kikon on Kikon London to discuss what? To discuss staff plus engineer paths and careers. Fabiani hosted the track there, and the track received a really great feedback. Thanks for the Fabiani to be our excellent track host and the speakers. And later, the Kikon San Francisco committee decided to also have the same track here at this conference. And here I am speaking at Kikon San Francisco. That was one of the biggest achievements of my speaking career. What are my suggestion action items for you to organize the community events? If you are an aspiring staff plus engineer, remember that you find already your user group and you start to give talks of your local user group or your local framework group or some meetup. Now it's time to offer help for the leaders of your community. Our software community needs help, needs help, needs more tip to organize. And this is a good opportunity to learn how to execute better projects because the conference is a short time box project that you learn a lot about managing people, managing timelines, managing deadline, and synchronize with a bunch of people. I recommend to you in organize a study group in your company and write one plus article per month to some, some place like InfoQ or any uh, public portal. If you are already a staff plus engineer, I recommend you organize a study group in your company with something that is new, 
not just about the problems that you have on your current project or your current organization. Bring something new. Remember that you should be someone that you have the vision for three years from now. What are the, the problems that you have in three years from now? What technology that your team you learn? You start to build a small group of study group in your company of those skills. Talk with the conference organizers and ask them how you can help you can imagine how people will be receptive, uh, uh, will be open to receive your feedback or even receive your help. And please pair with someone, a sparing staff plus engineer, and help them to to organize a small conference or a small tech meetup. For instance, Leandro at that moment, the one that helped me organize um, the the conference at, at the, the small lunch and learning groups in my company. He was uh, already a staff plus engineer at our company. He was the one that find, helped me find me a room, helped me find food to people uh, eat. So he's the one that has the right connections to make this happen. And if Leandro didn't do did this for me at that point of my life, I probably I, I have a different result. So pair with someone to help them achieve their goals. So I hope that after this 35 minutes, you agree with me that participating in conference, speaking at community events, open contributing with open source, organizing event and community, all those types of community engagement can be a safe space for you. Grow and keep growing as a staff plus engineer. And if we take a step back and remember that some time ago, there were there are no clear path beyond a senior role. And you remember the impact that what on me that attended my first KICOM in 2011 and finally find the role models and back in my career path that I'm, and I'm happy, really happy that look and lucky that worked it out. And, but this was a lucky shot. It's something that I was lucky to have the, the with so Java go have received my first KICOM ticket and then attend the conference to find the role models to try to replicate on their careers. Currently, I'm really happy because our community is evolving and we have a better understanding and people are talking about the paths available for you to grow as a technologist beyond senior. Now we have great books. We have conference like this one that are discussing and we have communities talking about that. And I'm really happy that I did even a small contribution to it proposing this track for Kikondo last year. And finally, our community is building a better map of how to grow our career as a technologist after a senior role. Now we can find more literature, more conference, and it's easy to find staff plus role, mo role models in your community to replicate their steps. Remember that there are multiple paths on this map that will lead you to become a staff plus engineer. Community engagement is one of them, and I can certify that work with me. And it is still making me grow as a person and in my career, because I believe that community engagement are on the surroundings of each pillar described by Tanya on her book. So I hope that after this talk, you are able to better understand that community engagement is one of the paths that can help you to grow and become a successful Staff Plus engineer. I hope this talk is valuable for you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Adair. Hello. It's a great story. Thank uh, you so much, for Fabian, talk. for an invitation. Uh, my pleasure. Um, it's great to hear from you. Um, we had one question here uh, in the chat that I think it's, it's worth uh, answering again or talk, talking about again. Uh, someone asked about um, references of books, blogs, or courses that you can take uh, to speak better in presentations or in, in conferences. Um, can you elaborate a little more on that? I think uh, it's worth Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing that um, I don't know any book that teach you how to speak in, in, in public. But one thing that worked for me, as I, as I mentioned in the talk, was that I spoke a lot in multiple conferences. But in order to achieve that, I, I'll give one step back.
abstract. And the first thing that I learned is how to write a proper conference abstract. Because usually conference, they receive multiple uh, submissions. So you have to figure out how to write a proper abstract and in order to get accepted. And there is one thing on that um, if, if, if you put uh, in, in, um, in Google how to, uh, how to write tantalized titles, there's a lot of things that people in marketing they use to write a good conference title. And also you should keep your abstract charts. And regarding the blog post, I put a, a, a list of book here that transformed in my writing. This is re writing well. And this book teaches how to write nonfiction. And there's a lot of styles of writing. And also I tool that I use as a, a, um, a foreigner speaking English that helps me a lot is to use Grammarly to correct all my grammar and to write a, a proper English. Wait, I guess uh, I just put my my tip on on books. There's a book that I that's pretty old, but it's very nice to read. And um, I just put in the chat. It's called The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs. Uh, you don't don't have to to follow all the tips in there, but uh, they have very good and practical tips on how to present better. Um, there's another one that one uh, someone uh, wrote in the chat, the Software Attacks Elevator by Gregory Hope. Uh, I'm going to check this out also. Um, so while we wait for, for questions in the chat, I have, I have a few questions from my own here. Uh, so you, you talked a lot about um, interacting with people and uh, uh, sharpening your soft skills. Uh, in order to to become a better Stack Plus engineer, because a Stack Plus engineer is not so, is not only programming or, or coding; it's more than that. Uh, you you often are called to give the the technical perspective on something, so you have to learn how to uh, explain things to maybe non technical groups and things like that. But also to be promoted, uh, you get you, you need to be noticed by by your skills, right? And uh, right now, uh, especially for you that works, uh, you work on open source. So uh, I imagine that a good part of your work are um, remote, remote work. So you uh, work with teams that are not physically in the same space. And with uh, after pandemic and everything, uh, probably a good part of us are working uh, in this same environment. So how how do you see uh, these? Uh, interactions that are, are more, for example, you don't have talks over uh, coffee or uh, um, just uh, meeting someone in the, in the company A or something like that. So how, how do, do you, what is your experience in this uh, kind of interactions when uh, most of your interactions are not face-to-face? Uh, -face? How, how do you how do you uh, sharp your skills and how do you get noticed in this new environment? This, this, this is not easy because for me, I am I, I always this, this in-person communication is a kind of hard for me personally. So it's something that I really need to work out in order to make work. And, and actually being a remote for me, make me feel better in my daily life. But as you said, it's, I have always to fight with the tendency of become full isolated for the whole day and don't talk with someone when you want, when you want, because it's, it's, it's more comfortable for my type of personality, but this also impacts you that we don't have, uh, nobody knows about your work. Nobody knows what you do. So it's, it's, I don't have a straight answer, but I, I can share some things that I do that work out. The first one, first one is to keep um, bragging document. It's something that in every end of the week, you write everything good that happened in, in, our, in our daily job. Like I did this, I did that. I talked with these people. I presented this solution. I proposed this. I reviewed this request that got merged. I, I pushed this feature in order to be able to keep a track of everything that you did over the week. Because when you have your next um, meeting one-on-one with your manager, 
and, and being a remote, your relationship with the manager is the most important thing that you should care. With, with this bragging document, you'll be able to recap for your manager everything that you did. And you'll be, you'll be make your, your manager's life easier to remember what you do and, 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 and what you were able to accomplish, for instance, in a quarter. Another thing that I do is for, that I recommend for everyone in my team is that for every feature that you push, you try to, because we work on open source, we put a blog post together with the feature and advertise. And this is easy when, when you work, everything is on GitHub, but I always reply for someone that work on the private, publish a blog post on the internet of your company where it's so, anyone else can notice your feature. This you bring attention that you are and, and being practiced that you become a good writer and, and increase the chance of people uh, getting in touch to you to understand what you did, to realize, and also put in contact with someone that work in productization or someone that sell the software that you build. So this will help you grow your, 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 your notice. And another thing that I do is that every time that I have opportunity to go for a conference, right now the software conference are my, my space that I go intentionally as a nation of talk to meet new people and to gather new manager like we were at the Consul Francisco in person. That is the time of the, 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 the I, I try to attend a lot of conferences. So this is the time for me to go there and talk with new people and also to figure out people from my company that are actually speaking and, and connect with them. So the, the, the major secret that I, I think is that you should be intentional about um, how you promote yourself, how you promote your work, because there is no, as you mentioned, that there is no coffee time where you can speak freely. So you need to figure out how to sell your work for your manager in, in your 101. This is useful for you to have a bragging drop. Write out about new features. Your team you won't realize what you're working on if you're publicist about it. And also figure out some networking opportunities outside of your company. Great. We have only two minutes. So I'm going to do a, a quick question, mm -hmm. if you can be quick. Uh, sure. how, how do what do you think that companies should do differently to better support staff plus engineers or people that want to follow this path? Uh, uh, I think companies should realize that in order to keep technical people, technical engineers, they need to figure out what is the path beyond uh, a senior position that is not involved to become a manager and have direct reports. So company need to learn about big techs that are actually working on this, on, on, on this path and also in the, the subject where they're talking in this track to understand how to build inside their company a career path for people have a, um, um, a path to, 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 to put in, in front of five years from now what to be my role in the company. Great. So... Thanks a lot. You can uh, you so continue much. the conversation with other uh, through social media. And I don't know if you are in the, the conferences Slack, but there's very interesting uh, discussions going on in the track Slack. So thanks a lot, Heather. And thank you. Thank you, you again for the invitation. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.